rule number one. Hot cup of coffee. So in my last video, I shared a few tips that have helped me from setting the mood to getting the entire colors right in an image. If you have not seen that video, apologies, my bad. Here's a link right here to go and watch that video in your spare time before you play that game you're trying to finish with your friends online. Now in this video, I'm going to apply some of the principles I spoke about around through my entire process, coloring this image, this amazing line art from drum roll, the one and only Guile Shaw. On Instagram, he's popularly known as Spider Guile. So go onto his account and follow him, but don't tell you, don't, but don't tell him I sent you to this page. Just, just, just follow him. So without further ado, let's get to the video. In case you hear a worrying buzzing sound, uh, the guys next door, they're renovating the apartment. I don't know what's happening here, but cutting some metal or something, I don't know. Yeah, so like I said in my previous tutorial, I like to start out with just setting the mood that I'm going to go into the image with in this video. In this tutorial, I decided to choose blue because I was feeling it's going to be like a nighttime scene with Spidey just flying around the skies, the city line or something like that. So I'm just using the um, the magnetic lasso to select the entire line art and create a color hold for the character so I can now lay in the colors that I'm going to use for his costume into the color hold uh i think it's a good method to use color holds or clipping masks layer masks as i like to call them to to separate your character from the background instead of just having different layers of your character his um instead of just having different layers of each element of your character just splattered around your entire workflow it's good to have everything just clipped together under one layer mask so i just uh put in a gradient for the sky a top down it's darker from the top to signify the dark skies above and then lighter from below for the lights from the city i'm pretty much just going off my head i didn't use a reference for this image I was just doing it off head and then right now I've started to just put in like a general rim light to establish the direction of light hitting spider-man in the image and I'm using a blue light because it's night and uh, he's definitely outside so there's a light source above him which is going to be the moon that's shining really bright so it's like so i'm assuming he's just flying around on a dark day with a bright moon hitting him from above so i'm using a cool blue and i'm just figuring out my way through the image going over the forms going over his webbing the webbing on his costume and just pretty much bringing out the highlights in the rim lights because even the planes the planes facing the light source which is the moon are going to catch more light than the planes facing away from the light source even if it's for rim lights so the planes that are facing the direct light source will be brighter than the planes facing away from it now I've started to lay in kind of like the flat color for his costume, which is red. And the other color is blue, but um, in this one, I'm not using a direct red color for that. I'm using more of a red towards purple because the ambient light in this image is blue 
it's 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 towards blue since it's night and he's being lit by the moon so i'm using a red light a red a red that's towards purple so it's not just red it's more towards purple for the flat colors of his costume and then the blue i'm also going to use a blue that's not like sky blue but the blue is going to be more towards purple a little bit that's how i tend to think of colors when i'm trying to just do when i'm trying to just do the flats on the character i'm thinking of okay how is the lighting in the in the in the, in the general image how how is the lighting kind of hitting the character and what's the ambience like what's the light sources what are the light sources around him because the light sources are going to definitely influence the color choices i'm going to use so you can see it's not just a direct red <coughs> So I've started bringing out the forms on his face and I'm still using a kind of a maroon red towards the blues and I decided to light him from below. So I'm assuming if he's above buildings there's definitely going to be lights coming in from below him so i used I, I i chose to use a second light source from below and then i'm just following the forms the shoulder the forms of the shoulder and then just thinking about the material of his <coughs> thinking about the material of his costume if it's going to be like the old spider-man where it's more of cloth or recent or recent spider-man designs where it's more metallic so right now i'm just figuring it out just going over the forms it's a good thing to study anatomy for a while even though you're doing colors or you just want to be like a colorist is a good thing to take your time and study anatomy from study anatomy from loomis study anatomy from bridgeman study anatomy from one of my favorites michael hampton i pretty much drew almost all the images in that book michael hampton figure drawing and design i studied that book a lot and i studied uh, andrew loomis figure drawing too i studied both of those books uh, i think uh, that was 2014 or so i studied both of those books a lot the that that helped me with like my anatomy and just figuring out the way the human form interacts with like it, it, figuring out the way the muscles interact with the bone and how the human form can bend in motion that will help you a great deal when you're trying to color images like this and comics that are just because comics are basically just characters a whole bunch of characters so if you actually know your anatomy you know how forms react when they when they turn in a certain direction or when the character is in a certain pose it's going to be easier for you to just know how you approach coloring the forms because these are just these this isn't just a flat surface these are all forms you're coloring you're not just coloring coloring a, a, a table or a desk as just flat and then you just drop your color on it and it's boom it just looks amazing you have to understand how the form wraps around the body a, a very a, a very um inspirational person one of the greatest people I, I i believe i have learned from dave raposa he has a tutorial that specifically talks about how to wrap forms how to render forms in 3d space he explains it very perfectly where he just picks a form and then he he, he wraps his brush strokes around the form so i try to think of that kind of concept too when i'm coloring i don't just allow the i don't just allow the strokes or 
I don't just allow the shades, the cuts to just be flat. I try to think of the form. What, what form am I rendering? How does it react? What is the what is the anatomy of the form I'm rendering? How would it move in this direction if I was to render it this way? And then I'll just think about that and then I'll just try and color it that way. And so most times if I don't understand how that form will move, I'll look for reference from bodybuilders on Instagram. I just go to a bodybuilder's account and then just look at their <coughs> just look at their body, look at their poses and all that. Try to get the one that's more in line with the image I'm trying to work with. If I don't really like that, I will just pose myself in the mirror and then use my phone to take photos of myself if I have to do that. If I can't find the exact pose I'm looking for, if it's a really difficult pose with a funny angle, I do that. I'll just take photos of myself and i might even light myself sometimes if it's really that difficult for me to think of it but most times it's just i just find like getting photos of bodybuilders from ig it's it's, it's just it serves me way way more than having to just take photos of myself i mean that helps too but um i don't know I, it will be weird for my my friends and my housemates to just come into the room and just see someone naked taking photos of himself that would be really weird i do you think of it i wonder what they'll think if they see me doing that i wonder what they'll say i would love to find out <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so it's still the same thing um i'm now i've started to figure out the highlights I started to bring in the highlights of the image. So the brightest parts of the key light, I'm, I'm just rendering them and thinking about what what parts of the what part of his costume, what part of the anatomy is facing, what what are the planes that are facing where the light source is, and how will they re, re, react? Are they going to reflect? that much light is this is this costume metallic those are the things i'm keeping in my mind as i'm rendering those forms and just painting in those highlights and now i did the favorite thing that you guys always talk about i just use uh i think i used a screen layer to make the rim light pop from the background i put the layer on screen mode and then i just brushed in a darker blue color against the rim light to make it pop to make it a little bit brighter now this what i'm doing now is more of a stylistic choice i like to do it sometimes but most times it's just lights from above or the ambient light that i just paint into the shadows which are not i just paint into the shadows where light is not hitting so if i have a key light from below and a rim light from the top left corner there's still going to be planes that are facing the sky and those planes are the ones where i light with the ambient light source So I hope you enjoyed this process. It was a really short video, just a quick video to show how I apply the tips I was talking about in my previous video. I hope you understood what I was talking about in that video. If you have any thoughts, any suggestions or anything you want to see, you can always leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram and I will reply to you and I might also make a video regarding the question you asked. And you can also send me a message if you want me to check your portfolio out. I would love to see how you guys are interpreting the tutorials and the tips that I'm giving you. I would love to see how you use them in your own images. It would be fun if you tag me. I would love to come to your page and check them out.
if you enjoyed this video please leave it a like comment down below let's communicate and engage in the comment section tell me your suggestions i might make them into videos like this and subscribe to my channel if you haven't or if you're new here this guy that is welding next door is really pissing me off uh yeah please subscribe if you haven't i'm mohammed akbadi and i'll see you in the next video peace